sure no ayan si si siya po ay si ma'am siya ay uh, was brought to the hospital yesterday and uh, the baby came out <laughs> unexpectedly so uh, we congratulate bong for pastor bong for another baby amen hallelujah okay as we go to the word this morning um you would like to just look at the scriptures i'd uh, i'd like for us to stand up and uh, we look at the scriptures we have been um, talking about um, you know we have had for several months i've introduced to you the hand illustration and uh, you know it, it would be good to to be reminded of them and um, the smallest finger we say we we read the bible okay the ring finger we say we study the bible and then the middle finger we say this reminds us that we uh, need to memorize the scriptures and the fourth finger tells us that we need to meditate because if we have memorized it easier to meditate on things that we already have in our minds and lastly our thumb uh, talks about uh, the need to apply the word of the lord Amen. So we take our Bibles and uh, we go to our uh, declaration of the word. Amen. Again, this is a borrowed composition by Pastor Jerry Derman. Oh, but uh, I, I, I just happen to love it. No, um, Concise enough for us. Okay. We uh, leave our Bibles or maybe cell phones with Bible app on them. Okay. Together we say, this is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today for God to speak a word that will change my life forever. Amen. Remain standing and there's a portion of scripture that I'd like for us uh, to read. And um, firstly, part of it is in Deuteronomy chapter 4. This is about instructions uh, about the word of the lord verse 1 of deuteronomy chapter 4 says hear now o israel the decrees and laws i am about to teach you follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land that the lord the god of your fathers is giving you do not add to what i command you and do not subtract from it but keep the commands of the lord your god that i give you and again, in Deuteronomy, just uh, moving a little farther, in the um, chapter 6, um, it says here, verse 1, These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live, by keeping all these decrees and commands that I give you. And so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey. Just as the Lord God of your fathers promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and of your gates. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the freedom to come together, not only to worship you as our God, but also to learn more about you through your word. We pray that you will just uh, bless our time together, that all of us uh, with open minds, open hearts, may come to a deeper, and even um, wider, higher uh, dimension of learning about you. Thank you because you're here and your presence makes it real for us today to really enjoy not only you, but also one another in fellowship. Bless the remainder of this time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Shall we all take our seats? Hallelujah. Okay, greetings also to our viewers uh, on live streaming. 
Hallelujah. This is Father's Day. Again, congratulations sa ating mga tatay. Kung malapit kayo sa isang tatay, tapikin nyo sila. Sabihin nyo, congratulations. Okay? Kaya mo yan. Sabi mo sa kanya. Baka kasi, <laughs> makainisip niya, Father's Day, paano ko, pa, pa, ano, <laughs> ilalans out ko dapat itong mga anakong to. <laughs> okay? Okay, so, kaya natin yan. Kahit simple, kaya po. Amen. Don't, don't think about uh, no, uh, ano pang meron. Kung ano lang talagang meron. That's, that's okay. Hallelujah. So this is Father's Day and so happy Father's Day. Um, okay. Hindi ko alam kung mayroong frame po. I think we're okay. Uh, the next frame will tell us about a super dad. Super. Ayan. Hello. Ayan. Super dad. Lahat ng mga super dad dyan, magsabing amen. Ha? Kahit hindi na kaya, anak, kaya ko yan. <laughs> Ayan. Oo, super dad po yan. Nasabi ni Max Lucado, My father did not do anything unusual. He did what dads are supposed to do. Just be there. Uh, nandun lang, his presence. Uh, you know, more than the gifts, more than all the things that we do for our kids, uh, just being there. Nandyan ka lang, available ka lang bilang tatay, ay napalaking bagay po yan. Amen. Well, uh, for those of us who may, maybe our parents are way out, you know, uh, maybe has to, do, uh, has to go abroad for something, for some reason, for uh, earning a living, uh, it's a need of the family, so we just have to find a way to, to celebrate Father's Day even if your parents are away. But again, um, more than anything, if there's nothing you think that you can give in terms of money, um, your presence is more than enough. Amen. Your presence is more than enough. Yes. Uh, let me introduce you to what is considered as uh, the largest family in the world. Okay. Um, yan pong nasa gitna. The, mid, the man at the middle is the father. I mean, just, just one father. Okay. Um, that father is his name is Zayona Chana. Just, just uh, no. okay. Lives with all of them in a one hundred room mansion. His wives take in take turns to share his um, to share his bed. Hmm. It takes thirty whole chicken just to make dinner. Isang kainan lang yun. He is head of the world's biggest family, and says he is blessed to have his 39 wives. Sayuna Chana also has 94 children, 14 daughters-in-law, and 33 grandchildren. They live in a 100-room, four-story house set amidst the hills of Baktuang village in Indian state of Mizoram, where his wives sleep at gi in giant communal dormitories. Pakibalik niyo po yung picture. Uh, you see, this man, okay, in picture, um, actually, I was surprised because I look at it again, uh, look for this again on the internet, and I still found him, but it uh, doesn't look like it has changed. This is the same picture that actually I used when I gave, um, when I spoke at the men's convention in Lingayen way back in 2013, I think. So this must have been, siguro ngayon po, and I remember, uh, I remember him during that time, he said he still, wa he still wants to add two more wives, actually, young wives. Yes. Um, in their village, they look forward to being, becoming one of the wives of uh, Chayana. Okay? Sayona Chana. Because they are a part of the cult. There's a cult that says that the Lord has called him to, to father a huge, a big family, and they all become you know, followers of God. So it's actually a cult. Okay, e, pakit sabi sa katabi mo, bawal sa four square yan. So, wag na po kayong mangarap. Hallelujah. Uh, I included him in the picture, I showed it to you, because I believe there's something about being a father. He, this guy is very visionary. This guy is he really intent on having, you know, uh, hundreds <laughs> Uh, of of of, of uh, his own family uh, spread throughout the village and throughout the town, and uh, so I, I 
I, I look at this guy as a, as a leader, um, you know, a provider and everything. Um, he may not be an ideal father to just a few like we always know uh, a family to be, but because maybe of his mission in life, um, you know, uh, that's why he's doing this. Uh, 39 wives, maybe it's now 41, uh, yeah, maybe 42 wives now. Uh, because I remember definitely that he really wanted some more wives. Okay, so, okay, so we look at another picture of a father, of a super dad. And it says, the father doesn't tell you that he loves you. He shows you. Di na po masyado yung anak, mahal kita, ano? I think most fathers don't, uh, are not that expressive of, of their feelings toward children. Mostly it's their mothers. But normally, it's not really telling you how he much he loves you. It, the father shows how love is being done. That's why I've always um, told my children that when I told my wife, their mom, when we were, I was just uh, courting her, when I said, I love you, and she said, yes, I love you too, you know, and we got married. Uh, and then we have children. The first boy that came out, she woke me up at one o'clock in the morning, and she told me to feed the baby, okay, with a bottle, of course. Uh, I really, in my heart, I said, maybe this is what it meant when I said, I love you. You, know, you have to wake up early morning. At one o'clock, two o'clock. So, you know, to say I love you has so many meanings. Uh, definitely, when you're single, you're young, uh, all the excitement is there, you know. But now you're married and uh, waking up early morning. Wow, that's true love. Amen. So, normally, it's not the love, love that is a feeling. It's now love that is commitment. The language um, is a little different because now you are a father and you show uh, your kids about love. There is an acronym about father. And again, this is a super dad. Father. Uh, F means funny. Amen. Sino po sa atin ito, funny tayo sa bahay? We are entertaining our children. Okay? Mga fathers, uh, kayo yung mga comedian sa bahay, di ba? Oo. Alam nyo, pag sumasayaw ako sa bahay, tuwang po ay mga anak ko noon. But I don't do it now, of course. Wala lang na sila. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. Uh, excited po sila pag uh, I have my own show at home, no? Ayan. And another is father. Doon sa A, it says patient. Okay, amen ba mga tatay dyan? Patient ang tatay. Strong. Hero. Wow. Um, growing up, I had Bible heroes actually because I, was, I grew up in church. And uh, I had this, all these heroes. But then my father is definitely one of them. Uh, hero ko po, tatay ko rin. It says, ang tatay uh, is reliable. Okay, maasahan po siya. And then another is provider. Ayan, provider. So that's our image of a father. Now, today, um, my title is about the images of my father. Images of my father. But this is not really about my father. This is about fathers. But because we're only here for, you know, less than an hour, we can only talk about some of these things, not all of the things um, a father can mean to us. So, um, what images comes to mind when you think about your father? What are the images that, just, that is there when you talk about your father? I believe there's a lot of them. I believe that a father could be a mentor or definitely is a mentor, a teacher. Our father teaches us a lot. He coaches his children. A father is a counselor. Um, maybe some of us, the image of a father is like a disciplinarian. He's strict. He's authoritarian. To some of us, maybe our father is firm, man of few words, and always irritable. I don't know. Maybe to some of us, our father is stingy. Kuripot. Okay. Sino bang kuripot? Si nanay, si tatay. Maybe to some of us, fathers, si father, my father, maybe he's generous or meticulous. And maybe to some, 
your father is maybe attentive. He always is there listening to you. He's loving. He's caring. So, many experiences with fathers. And um, another issue about images of parents, the question is, does this image or images of your earthly father in any way reflect or affect your image of the heavenly father? So the way you, you feel about the father, your father, the way you look at him, the way he relates to you and you relate to him, um, does this in any way affect our image of God, the Father. Yes, it does. If you were loved and cared for as a child, you see God as a loving Father. You look at God and all that you can think about God is the love, the forgiveness, the care, the concern. But if you're abused as a child or maltreated as a child, if you're neglected as a child, then you see God as a strict and stern God with a ready whip to hit you any time you make a mistake. So the image you have of your earthly fathers, earthly father reflects definitely on your image of God. But thank God that today, especially we that open the word of God and keep on studying, learning about the word, we know that when Jesus said, even your, your fathers on earth, evil as they are, know how to care, how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly father, the, the father in heaven really cares for his children. Amen. And so as we talk about images of our fathers, let me just introduce at least four images that I consider to be true about God and also about my own father and um, and of the many that I have mentioned I'm sure we cannot touch all of them but um, I'll probably just touch four of them and hopefully this can be true to you also and to your father number one I believe that my father which is true also of my heavenly father is the sustainer of my life he is the sustainer he sustains my life he cares for my needs my father in heaven, just like my father on earth, cares for what I need in this life. Now, there is a verse in Genesis chapter 12 where it says in verse 10 that there was a famine in the land and Abraham went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. In other words, Abraham was mindful he was thinking about survival for the family. And because there was famine, if you remember, um, there was, you know, Egypt seemed to be always be in abundance. And Canaan land would always be, you know, during drought and, um, and, 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 and famine, um, people from that area would go to Egypt for, um, you know, to buy supplies. And so in this case, Abraham, as a father, uh, provided or tried to uh, find uh, provision for the family. I would say Abraham as a father provides for the needs of his family. And as true to all of us, fathers always find ways selflessly. Fathers find ways. Now I go to Kubao and I look at BDO and it says, we find ways. Hello. You see, BDO finds find ways, will always find a way to earn <laughs> from your money. But our fathers find ways to spend whatever they have for our own good as, ch as children. And so we look at our father, I look at my father as my source. I look at my father as the one sustaining my very existence. And so that I don't have any problem looking at God as the sustainer of my life. I have no problem looking at God as my Jehovah Jireh. I mean, if, even if I don't see right here before me the needs that I, you know, the, the needs that I have, I can believe that my Father in heaven is my Jehovah Jireh because I see that, I saw that in my Father also. 
I was not abandoned as a baby. I was not abandoned, left out as a child. I was cared for. I was loved. And there was lots of love in the family. There was less money, but lots of love in the family. Hallelujah. Now, you know, you know what? A family can survive even if there's less money for as long as there's abundance of love and care. So don't say, Pastor, you know, we don't have this, we don't have that. But you know you're here and you know, you know God, you know His Word. Let the love of God be abundantly present in our homes. Amen. Uh, that is not, of course, a uh, substitute for, for in effort at really earning money, earning what our family really needs. But um, that, that gives us comfort. Because not everything that we can get, our satisfaction, our joy, our fulfillment, is not based on material wealth. It's not on things. Our uh, fulfillment in life, our joy as a family, is really uh, given by God. Hallelujah. So my father, my picture of the father, or my father is the one who provides. In First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, talking about people who desire to serve the Lord, um, it says here, but if anyone does not provide for his own and, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. It is scriptural. It is in line with God's intention that fathers provide for their families. Amen po ba, mga father? In, in, uh, we cannot just say, oh, uh, by faith, you know, God provides. And then we just close our eyes and don't look for ways. And we continue to wait upon video to find ways for us. No. As parents, as fathers especially, and even if you're a single, single mom, and, um, you know, um, maybe you, your husband has passed away, uh, tawagin nila ay natay ka ngayon you are the nanay and the tatay in the family and I salute you for that but again the image of a father to provide for his children for the family is very scriptural and in fact if one fails to do this 1 Timothy 5 verse 8 says he has actually denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever this is very strong for me as a son of the, you know, as a minister of the gospel, this is very important. I may be a minister, I may be a pastor, I preach the word every Sunday, I hold to the scriptures. But I cannot just sit down or lie down and say that God will provide my needs and forget about it. I have been involved in church planting. And money is so scarce when you start church. And we, we, we were starting a church in Makati and children started coming. That's why out of my very, you know, uh, I was just trying to, to make it work smoothly. So I told my wife, we get married and we are pastors. We're starting this church and... Uh, we should not have a child immediately. So we, we, we planned, uh, you know, I was really plan, really trying to plan it so nice. I said, we will not have a child until five years. But coming down from two-week honeymoon in, in, in Baguio, I nabuntis agad yung misis ko. And it, it destroyed my paradigm of a very well, you know, well-planned family. Anong gagawin ko ngayon? Parang gusto ko pa siyang sisihin eh. Uh, not, not because sisihin ko talaga siya, but I had, I had this thing planned. And every time I come to the Lord, there's always a gentle rebuke from the Lord. You're preaching the word and, and a child is a blessing. But then I will say, yes Lord, it's a blessing, but can you just allow me to see at least some, you know, some money in the bank? Or at least allow me to buy an educational plan or whatsoever. Uh, you know, I, as a father, I really wanted to see that. And I tell you, as a father, 
I sold insurances. I sold pension plans. I was a pastor, a church planter. I was involved in real estate for a while. Never because I wanted money. Never because I wanted to be a millionaire. I just wanted to feed my children. The only reason that I had, I had you know, I, I, I sold the rented plants was because my commission as a sales counselor, by the way, yeah, I know the, how those things work. My area manager says, Marsh, you can be, you know, you can be a manager. You do this, you do that, you form your own units and everything. So I, have, I want to involve the whole church. I had my unit managers, it was the senior manager and manager and manager and manager. And so all of these commissions, really late long. With that, I bought an educational plan for my three children at the time. And I started to have peace because I paid the first installment, quarterly installment with my commission. But that's all I paid. The next quarterly, I couldn't pay it anymore. Then I came to the Lord, started crying again, Lord, what will happen to my children? All I can do is just feed them. What about their school? Everyone was buying educational plans. I couldn't. Well, gently, the Lord said, just try your best. I will do the rest. Amen. And my children are all done with university. And the Lord literally paid for them. But I tell you, I had to do my, I had to do it. I had to show the Lord that I really wanted to work. I even said, Lord, I can, if you allow it, I can leave ministry for a while. I just really want to work. I really want to take care of my children. I was so concerned that my wife will become tiny, you know, if I couldn't feed her anymore. But, or skinny, I mean. Pero malusog po ang misis ko. Mga anak ko naman malusog din. At nakatapos din. Hallelujah. Amen. Parang malumpot kayo. Masyado kayo interesado sa kwento ko. Uh, I have to balance between being trying to be a good father and also trusting God. You know, and stay on course with the calling that God has given us. I even challenged my wife. I said, we, we need to stay in ministry. We need to keep the ministry going. If I go abroad and work, then the ministry stops. I told my wife, maybe you can go abroad. <laughs> Sabi niya, bakit? Gusto mo na akong palitan? Amen. But really, in my heart, it was just, Lord, I am trying to be a good father. I have these four kids that have given me. Need to send them to school, feed them and everything. God was gentle. My children finished all of them with flying colors. The Lord paid for their education. I mean, I'm saying as a father, you have to have direction for the family. But, um, but I am so saying that if you do your best, God will really take care of the rest. I, I was not, I could not even sleep sometimes. I could not lie down because I need to work, I need to work, I need to work. And true enough, the Lord sustained me through all those little, you know, efforts that I did. The Lord showed how he can bless working, hands that work. But I can only credit everything to God because definitely it was God. It was never because of the income I earned from all of those extra things that I did. God has been so good. Amen. God is our provider. God is our sustainer. He can sustain you. You do not have to give up what you're doing for God. You don't have 
to compromise your faith so so that you are your needs are provided because when you serve God with all of your heart and do your best for God he will take care of the rest but God definitely it's God it's not you it's not me it's not anything even some of my sisters even my own brother said dong sabi niya when, you, when your kids grow up and you are a pastor I'm going to help you I'll get them through college and after going abroad, my brother even forgot that he has a pastor brother in me. Talagang nakalimutan niya na. Hallelujah. Uh, had, I, had we trusted on men, on, 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 on man's ability, then we'd all just be, uh, you know, discouraged and everything. But God sustains His people. He is the sustainer of what we need. Hallelujah. Palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. Jesus. Amen. Can you imagine? It says here, if you fail to provide for your own family, for your own household, you have denied the faith and you're worse than an unbeliever. It's a stern warning. It's a warning for, his, for God's people. There was a time when Jacob, you know, when there was famine in the land of Canaan. Well, first in Egypt, there was famine for seven years. And then there was, I mean, there was abundance for seven years and then followed by uh, seven years of famine. The seven years of famine was actually spread out throughout the region and even Canaan was in famine also. Jacob said to his sons in chapter 42 of Genesis, it says when Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you just keep looking at each other? He continued, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. So go down there and buy some for us so that we may live and not die. Can you imagine at this stage with all the children of Jacob, all married except maybe um, the youngest at this stage. So Jacob literally was now a grandpa, grandfather. And it's still the whole, the whole clan still live with him. The whole family still live with him. Jacob, as a good father that he has been, told his sons to look for food. Hallelujah. So that even Jacob at his old age was still thinking about the whole family. In other words, even tayong mga grandparents, uh, you know, we, have, we will always be fathers. In our, in, our, in our hearts, we are still parents to our children. And so at times, we cannot close our eyes to the needs even of our grandchildren. I mean, I cannot close my eyes. I still pray for my grandchild like I prayed for my children. Hallelujah. Father walks with faith in God's word. I remember my own father, really a believer, standing tenacious in, in tough times when resources were scarce. Matindi po ang pananampalataya na kay mga magulang. But then we need to think about deeds. Let's remember Matthew chapter 6 also. Where it says, Do not worry about saying what we shall eat or what we shall drink or what we shall wear. For pagans run after all these things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Alam po ito ng ating Panginoon. But seek first, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So we, may, we are, you know, as, fa as parents, as fathers especially, we, we, we want to secure the future of our children. We would like to provide for their future. But let it not go to the extent of us really worrying and being so, uh, you know, state of anxiety at all times so that we can, you know, uh, worries and anxiety uh, actually um, makes you acidic, you know. <laughs> uh, so, let's just trust the Lord. Hallelujah. In 2 Timothy chapter, 1 Timothy 6 verse 17, talking about... Um, those that may have some, a, a lot in this world. It also says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. 
So this reflects about my father. I'm sure it reflects about your father too. Because God our father is reflected in this discretion of our fathers. Our father, like God, is the sustainer. But then of course, when we get out of the uh, fold of our families and we go have our own family also, then our father in heaven remains the sustainer. Secondly, my father, my image of my father is that he is my protector. He keeps me safe at all times. My father would always tell me that, you know, we need to move here in this place because this is strategic location for our house because, you know, yun po laging sinasabi ng tatay ko, pag lumipat ang bahay, dito po tayo, ito maganda tong location na ito. Wow. Location or residence is both for security and opportunity. You know, po, it's, it's, not, it's not that easy to just be moving from one place to another. When we move residence, for example, when we change jobs, for example, when we move from one company to another, what is that compelling reason? Bakit po tayo lilipat ng bahay, ng location, ng city, ng school, or ng company? Why? Anong meron? When we move in terms of location or employment, we move because of security, but actually also of opportunity. That's why a father who's really concerned for his children is entrepreneurial in spirit to secure his family's future. Fathers, lahat po ng mga tatay, yun pong desire natin. We all want to secure the future of our children. That's why gusto po natin laging gumawa ng paraan. We would like to invest. We would like to, to be in business. We would like to do this. We would like to do that. So our children are secured in their future. When I was with my father, I, I feel, always felt safe in his hands. So that when we think about God our Father, we are also at peace. We don't worry. My father will always go the second mile. For as long as it, you know, it makes me happy. Laging second mile ang aking tatay po. Laging sakripisyo ang aking tatay. That's why when, when, you know, when God does these things and blesses me, I know it is pleasure because it was the pleasure of my dad to give me something that I really enjoy and I really want. You know, God is also telling us today that He, is, he will always go the second mile to bless us with something that makes us happy. He is not only concerned with meeting our actual needs. God can also grant even the desires of our hearts. Meron pa ba tayong mga desire? O masyado tayong na-indoctrinate doon sa God supplies the need. You know, like three times a day. Wow. Yes, He does. But God also desires to, you know, it's the pleasure of the Father to give us the desires of our hearts. Amen. Merong mga couple dito. Ay, Pastor, mag-organize uh, mag ka ng trip sa, sa, sa Holy Land, sa Israel. Kaya tuloy, gusto mag-organize na nga siguro talaga ako. Kasi ginagawa daw ni Pastor John dati yun eh. Lahat ng gustong sumama, taas ng kamay. Honestly. Marami-rami, pwede na. Pwede na, marami-rami na. What I mean is this, it's not bread and butter, it's not, no. But is that really a desire in your heart? If it is a desire in your heart, God can, can grant it to us. Amen. And uh, maybe we need to organize this. Hallelujah. Uh, gusto niyo ba, ano ba, ano na ba ngayon? Uh, June. Gusto niyo ba October? <laughs> Sabay. Sabay. Hindi pa, kulang pa, kulang pa. Okay, oh, sige, sige. But I, I do, you know, I'm just reminded of this. Uh, pwede po, we can, we can have this uh, dreams come true. Amen. Because God delights to give it to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, you know, my father leads the way 
to make sure that everything is clear and safe. Ang tatay ko po, sabi niya, diyan ka muna, titignan ko muna to. It's like in a war-torn country, there's merong mga landmines, and so they would, they would take a team, actually, that does the mine clearing, so they have this machine with a fork like that, you know, sweeping way ahead. That's to protect the main column, the main, yung mga, mga sundalo po natin. Uh, mayroon bang father na sabi niya, anak, baka may mind doon, pakiklear mo na lang muna. Okay? Hindi kung may mind nga at sumabog yun, hindi safe ka nga naman si tatay. Warak naman si anak. No, fathers, it's, it's really the father who says, you know, I'm willing to, to, to be uncomfortable, I'm willing to face danger for my children, for my family. The father protects. He will always go the second mile. Why? Because this is the best for his family. The father, as the protector, he provides for the safety of his family, is likened to a wise man in Matthew chapter 7. Ano bang sinabi ron? 7 verse 24, Therefore, if anyone who hears these words of mine puts them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now, if you, if you, you know, between the rock and the sand of the sea, I mean, along the beach, it's much easier. Napakadali pong magtayo doon ng haligi sa buhanginan. So why, why, you know, why do all of this hard work, slow, painful labor, trying to put your house, establish, build your house on the rock? Why? Because... The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. In other words, when you think about what can be done to secure your family, it's okay to put in labor, hard labor. It's okay to put in a lot of hours of sweat and work for the future and the benefit and the safety of our family. Let us not have shortcuts. That's why when pag tayo po, you know, we go and uh, earn a living, hindi po tayo nandadaya, hindi po tayo pumapasok sa mga get rich quick schemes because it's been said that easy come, easy go. A lot of times I've refused, people come to me. Pastor Marsh, you put in this much money and Every end of the month, you'll take this much. I said, why that easy? And he said, don't ask Pastor Mars. If this is sure money, sure money. And I still refuse. Let me warn you, my brothers, my sisters. Yes, we want to secure our families. We want to make our family, you know, or the future of families are uh, assured, then we go to the schemes of easy money, then all of a sudden, it does not stand the test. It collapses. Why? As they say, it comes easy, then it goes so easily also. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice, is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Hallelujah. Warning po yan sa atin. You may have heard about news. Mayroon po kayong news sa mga narinig. I've always mentioned, I think I've mentioned several times, that there is a guy who have this Ponzi scheme going and billions of money. Finally, this guy got caught and his operations was exposed by his own children. This guy, after gathering billions, he couldn't stand it anymore. He was buying islands, luxuries, airplanes, um, 
everything at the several, after several years. And he called his children. And he confessed to them. I've been running this scheme. I have no business. All that I have given to people as their uh, interest, income, have been money coming in also from people. And when he, began, when he confessed this to his children, to three sons and his wife, the next morning, his children called the FBI in the U.S. They arrested him the next day. Now he's serving 120 life sentences. I will not tell you the name, but if you are ever enticed to go into some of these things, please, if you don't have an advisor, come to me. I have done a lot of research about this. Because this scheme can go on for five, ten years. Because for as long as a lot of people really want to earn more, they'll put, put in more money into it. And so that I can always give you the interest, but it's not interest, it's all money coming from people. I have three major names on my laptop to show you what is happening. And all of this because we want more. Greed comes in. We refuse to listen to legal minds about these things. All because we want to secure the future of our children. Or maybe it's greed. But you know, there's a way to earn. A proper right way to earn. Because although God wants to provide for us, He does want to provide in ways that is also according to His plans and purposes. Thirdly, I believe that God, my Father, just like my Father in heaven, I call him the manager. My Father is my manager. My picture of a father is a manager. He manages our family. To manage is to deal with the issue of control or order. This is to avoid chaos and confusion within the family. When you talk about management, you manage what is there, the resources, both people, and even uh, material resources, mina manage po yan. Why? Kung wala pong manager, then it's all chaotic, and each one does his own thing. Ang tatay po natin sa langit is the best manager. He coordinates all of creation. I mean, the galaxies and everything. It's all in place. That's how our God manages the creation that he has given us. And he calls us in Genesis and saying that he wants to partner with us. And he calls men, especially the man, the husband, the father. He says that he will manage creation. And so the father as a manager manages his family because the family is the first and primary enterprise ng isang tatay, ng isang father, ng tawag actually sa kanya isang entrepreneur. Lahat po ng tatay, kayo po ay mga entrepreneur. Amen. Congratulations. Sabihin mo, kamayan mo yung katabi mong tatay. Oo. Negosyante ka pala. Ang una niyang negosyo yung pamilya niya. Imamanage niya yan. Hindi po nininegosyo. That's not the word. But what I mean is, here is the family, and you really want to be a successful manager, you manage your own family first. It's also like ministry. You want to be a pastor, you pastor your family first. Yan po ang totoo. That's the truth. If you cannot manage, you cannot manage your own family, then how can you manage a bigger company, for example? First Timothy chapter 3, verse 4. Talking about people desiring to serve. Medyo maganda ito. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him and he must do in a manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? 
So tayo po, we want, we want position, you know, in leadership. Well, the first leadership issue is really the family. Ayusin po natin ang ating mga pamilya, mga kabatid. Amen. Mga tatay, ayusin po natin. Hallelujah. Ang panghuli po na, big, na, na image ko ng tatay is ang tatay is a leader. Leadership deals with the issue of direction. Like a traveler, traveler, he has a compass and he knows when and how to use it. So mga tatay, tayo po mga leader, we are like travelers. Meron po tayong compass and we need to be using our compass. Malit po po ako and I was told how to use the compass. Kasi yung tatay ko po, laging nagbabiyahe yun. And he wanted to, you know, look for uh, lands na walang title and he would like to, uh, you know, cultivate them and own them, you know, and apply for its ownership. And uh, alaala ko po yan. And so, po ay mga uh, leader bilang mga tatay. We are the leaders. But then the Bible also tells about leaders na pag, if you are not really informed, if you do not know what you are doing, you are like leaning, uh, you are like a blind leader. And when, and the scripture says, in a parable, Jesus t- uh, taught his, the people, he said, he also told them this parable, can the blind lead the blind? Will they not fall into a pit? In other words, tayong mga tatay, tayong mga parents, tayo po ng mga fathers, it is our job to be able to see way beyond, way ahead, so that we know where we are taking our families. Don't be, don't be blind leaders. Let us know exactly what is at stake. Let us know exactly what lies ahead. The dangers, the opportunities that are there ahead of us. We should be doing research. If you remember Joshua, in Joshua, the last chapter of Joshua, I believe 24, where, you know, Joshua challenged Israel. He said, you choose this day whom you will serve. You would like to serve all the, the, the idols of your parents, the idols of, uh, of those who are ahead of you. He says, you choose, you choose this day. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This is Joshua. You see, Joshua, he did not consult actually. There was no consultation. Joshua did not gather his children and grandchildren and consulted them and have a unanimous vote to either serve the Lord or not. Joshua, as a leader, took the initiative because he was God's leader. He said, we're going to serve the Lord. And you know what? His children and his grandchildren saw the heart of Joshua to serve the Lord. You know, when our grandchildren, when our children gets old, or when our grandchildren comes and they'll be asking, they'll be asking their parents, our kids now, their parents later, they will be asking their parents, Dad, Mom, okay, where did Grandpa go for church? Where did, you know? And then our children, their parents will be talking about, oh, by the way, your granddad, yung daddy ko, okay, wakes up early in the morning, attends the seven lakh service at Capital City Four Square Church. Oh, by the way, where is that church? Oh, it's in Project Four. It becomes that becomes the talk of the whole family, the entire clan that you have been attending this church, and you used to wake up early morning. You used to wake up this because you attend the ten o'clock service, you attend the two o'clock service, or the five o'clock service. Why? Because Joshua said, I, me, and my, this, my family, we will serve the Lord. This is leadership. You cannot always lead by, you know, all the time by consulting and having a, a process called democracy that the majority always wins. No. As parents, as fathers, ikaw, tatay, Manguna ka, because the Lord will bless your decision, especially that you've decided for the sake of your family to serve the Lord. Don't wait. Because when you make the right decision, God will bless it. When you decide for God, God will take care of the rest of it. 
And it's true with, you know, do you consult your wife? Hallelujah. For us that have long been in this church, for example, do you still consult your wife or your husband or your children on how much to give for your tithes? Anak, alam mo, ito yung sweldo ko eh. Sa tingin mo ba? No. Do it. Because God's blessing will be upon you. Amen. Take the lead. Dahil ikaw yan eh. Niligay kayo ni Lord dyan. Wow. Final thoughts. Your earthly father know when and how to give good gifts to your children. How much more is your father in heaven? Yes. Wow. But let me remind you of this gentle reminder from Scripture. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your father feeds them. Are you not much more, not much more value than they? Wow. For the pagans run after all of these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. If you then this is Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Yeah, this is the verse. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those he loves? So these are the images I have of my earthly father. Ito po, personal reflection. Sustainer, protector, manager, leader. Ganun po, ano kaya din man ang ating reflection about God. Today, again, let me remind our parents, I mean our fathers, and let me greet you, Happy Father's Day. May our Heavenly Father sustain us all with His grace, with His blessings, with His mercy. Let me just, just pray for our fathers. Ano po ang meron? Anong reflection? Anong image meron tayo sa ating mga tatay? You know, our God, Father in heaven, cares for us. He knows our struggles. We've just read about Matthew chapter 6 where it says, Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. I don't know ano pong mga challenges meron sa ating mga tatay. O sa ating mga mothers, na kayo po ang single parents. But definitely, our Heavenly Father is looking down from above right now. And He's just there, desiring to reach out and meet whatever needs we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We have reflected on the images of fathers. And you know the things, the issues that are now in the hearts of fathers. The concerns that he has for the family, the children. And even maybe the extended family, the grandchildren. But Father... We would like to rest assured of your care, of your love, of your concern. That you have said that we will not really worry about these things. That worry doesn't add any thing to our, in a second minute to our lives. But we just have to trust you. Maybe... It's safe to say that when we have done our best, then indeed you will, can, you will do the rest of it, Father. But also we have real, genuine concerns with our families. Maybe between the husband and the wife, or maybe between the parents and the children. But Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you will reach out right now your hand to bless your people. And that you will continue to meet every need. That even right now, the things that kind of worries us, make us think about these things, Lord, and realize that indeed you are the Father, that we can come to you, and that there is 
your, your hand is just ready to bless your people. Embrace us. Father, you see its Father's heart this morning, O oh Lord. Bless your people. In Jesus' name, bless your people, especially our fathers this morning. Hallelujah. I'd like to challenge our fathers. I don't know if there are real, you know, real concerns that bothers us this morning. I don't know if it is something to do with material needs that you have. But you know that without the move of the Lord in your life, it's going to be very, very difficult for you. But with God, nothing is impossible. So Father, Kapwa Tatay, you have a need, and then you know it is, it's only the Lord that can meet that need. I'd like for you to stand up right now and believe with me that God is going to just grant your need. This is a very specific concern para sa'yo bilang tatay. Amen. Just stand up po, ang ating mga tatay. If you have this need, if you have this need, I, ako man din, I mean, yes, but, but God is here. And we will look to Him now, special day po ito, this is Father's Day. So yung concern po natin, yung concern po natin, you, you know, things that touches our hearts, touches the heart of the Heavenly Father. Just come to His presence and just hang on to Him. Don't give up. I have never given up on the things that I have to go through. Even the most, the toughest of times, I hang on to God and God has proven Himself to be faithful. God is here. He is. He is, He is. And He's going to meet that need. Sige po, taas po natin ating kamay sa Panginoon. Father, uh, mga tatay po, I'm, I'm going to pray for you right now. Hallelujah. Not, not because lahat na ng needs ko as a father ay namit na po, no. But it's just like you. I have my own concerns. Genuine, legitimate concerns. But I know it's only God that can do it. Hallelujah. At alam ni Lord John, Let's pray. Father, fathers are standing right now. Oh, fathers are standing. And this has to do with concerns, legitimate concerns that fathers have. Sa mga anak, dahi, oh, maring sa mag-asawa or sa pamilya, anything, Lord, it can, this can be relationship, but this can also be material needs, financial needs. Related to, to businesses, maybe related to employment. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we open this up before you. A lot of times, we cannot just open it up to anybody. But we can always open up, come to you with open hearts. And we confess that we need you today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If it has to do with sustaining the family, if it has to do with the safety of the family, if it has to do with the family need, needing management, if it has to do with, with leadership, Lord, direction, just like Joshua, in Jesus' name, we would like to release your mighty blessing upon these fathers. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I confess, Lord, that your word, your word, when you said, but by your grace, it's, you're going you're gonna to supply every need according to your riches in glory. Yes, you're, you're, you're our Father, our Father in heaven is going to supply all our needs according to your riches, not according to our geniuses. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your provision. Thank you, Lord, for addressing that particular concern right now. If it is sickness and bodies needing touch, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Release that mighty touch right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you praise, glory, honor, thanksgiving. Oh, shikamakahanda, larabakaya, lararashanda. Receive the peace of God that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon.